Hi folks. Uh, a common thing that has to be done on small engines is replacement of the starter rope. We get this call here a lot at Earth Tools. How do I replace my starter rope? People think they have to buy a whole new recoil starter assembly, which is not necessarily true. Usually it's just the rope needs to be replaced because that's the disposable part. Uh, this is a brand new recoil starter off a of Honda engine. Uh, this rope got a little cut here during a project, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace it so it's good to go. So I'm going to give you a little walkthrough on how to replace this thing without having parts flying all over the place. Um, so, first thing is to take this off the engine. Uh, as I mentioned, this is off a of Honda engine. On the BCS machines, getting the recoil starter off usually entails having to take the engine bumper off. Um, some models you can buy without taking the bumper off. It just depends on whether you can access the three screws that hold the starter on. Sometimes there's also a debris screen over the recoil starter. That would be like a black perforated metal screen that we install on there to keep uh, trash from getting sucked up into your cooling fins. If that's in place, just take out the uh, Phillips head screws that hold it on, pull it off, and then you can access the bolts holding the recoil starter on. This procedure that I'm going to show you here is good for just about all small engines. Um, it's certainly good for the Honda. It would be the same on most Briggs & Stratton, Yamaha, Kohler engines. The Kohler diesels are a little different um, because you have to take the rope pulley out of those. Most of these other ones have a knot. The knot on the pulley is accessed pretty easily from the top of the pulley, so you don't actually have to remove the pulley. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pull this completely out until it's at its full, fully extended point. Now, the Honda makes it real easy because they have this webbing in the, uh, in the center of the pulley here, which makes the pulley kind of a pass-through. And they also have these slots in the recoil cover. Actually, I'm going to select a slightly smaller screwdriver. Do this one here. I can stick all the way down through there. Now it's jammed in place. The recoil can't rewind. It's trying to rewind. That is, if this wasn't here, the spring would just wind it back up. But I don't want it to do that. I want to pull this all the way out so the spring is fully charged, fully loaded. And now, and I'm, I'm not going to want to set that down on the table and let that thing push the screwdriver back up or else it'll just pop back in. So now I'm going to take this out. Now if, you're, if your rope has already broken, if, the, if you've completely broken half while you were pulling it, then you wouldn't have to particularly, um, well, you won't have to remove the old rope. But what you would do in the case, actually, well, I'll simulate that here in a minute. I'll shut up and just keep working. So now I'm going to cut this knot off here and take this out. So rope is out. Now, if your rope had broken, as I was just starting to say, then, of course, this spring would be completely discharged. That is, this thing would have boinged and just it would be doing nothing in here. So there would be no spring load to start with. In that case, you can spring load this before you install the new rope. Um, the easy way to do that is simply look at the recoil starter housing, figure out which way the rope would have wound in there. And you can always tell by the angle at which this, uh, this eyelet is in here. So I can see that this eyelet is sort of facing up. So I know the rope winds around this way. So you turn the, the pulley the opposite direction. Oh, I'm sorry, no. You turn it the same direction, right, because, ah, bad boy job. So as you pull this, it would be tensioning the spring. So the imaginary rope would need to tension it this way. So I'm going to pre-tension this spring by wrapping this thing up, and I'm going to wind it and wind it and wind it gently until it stops. Now that's, that's the stopping point right there. Now, that's when the when it stops is when that spring there's a big spring in here that spring is now completely wound up tight i don't really want that spring to be what stops the rope when you pull out the rope to the fullest point if it is you'll break the end off the spring because the spring will be uh you know under a lot of stress every time so now that i've fully charged it i'm going to let this pulley back and i'm going to look for the little hole through the pulley where the rope would line up with this eyelet where the rope comes out. So there's the, there's, the, there's the point right there. Here's the hole. And there's the eyelet that it passes out. So I've wound up the spring fully, and then I've backed it off to the point, the first point where that hole lines up with this hole. Then I'm going to lock it in place. 
now the, the spring is going to have enough tension to pull all the rope back into the thing. That's the, that's the cheater trick to rewinding your spring or recharging your spring. These handles are fully reusable. They usually just have some kind of a uh, plastic insert in the rubber right there. So you don't need a new handle just because you need a new rope. I'm just going to pull this up out of here. And whoa, let's not do that. Here's a new roll of rope. Rope is just sold by the foot typically. Anybody who sells it in cut lengths is just cutting it off of a big roll and charging you more for it probably. So I'm going to match this up. This should be about five feet. Uh, this one's probably a little shorter than that, but you can fit a little more on these things. Uh, I'll go about six inches longer than the original here because I'm going to tie knots in the end. That's going to take up a little space. So I'm going to use a propane torch. You can use a match or a Bic lighter or something. I like to burn the end of this rope for just a little bit just to keep it from unraveling. That's real good for calluses. If you don't have calluses, you know it too. Um, so now I'll feed this in through here, get it fed through the pulley. I have to, it takes a little finesse. I was real lucky. I hit the hole in the pulley the first time. Sometimes you got to kind of get down in there with one of those pliers and pull it through here. Somebody is paging me, but they're going to have to wait. So I'm tying a, a knot in the end of the rope. Just a single square knot is usually sufficient, although this one has a lot of room for a, for a knot in here, so I'm going to actually give it a, uh, a double loop square knot just to absolutely ensure that it doesn't come loose. There we go. All right, now that's nice and firm. I'll pass this up through here, through the rubber first, and then through the insert. Whoops, I burned my hand. I think there's enough room, there's plenty of room in that handle for a double as well. So one loop through, two loop through, pull it out, get it nice and tight, get this fed back through here. All right, perfect. Now pull this out, I'm going to hold the pulley with my thumb just so we don't have an out of control release here and voila it goes right back in and it works just like it should now there are some cases you find where you know you have a recoil starter where we call it its tongue is hanging out and that's a case where you know like the uh you've used the thing a long time and maybe the recoil spring has slipped a little bit or maybe some point somebody at some point has put a rope in it and not tensioned the spring properly here i didn't quite take enough of it off there I'm artificially detensioning the spring here. So there it is. That's an engine with its tongue hanging out. <laughs> I'm really tired. So you can fix this without taking this whole thing apart. You can do it just in the reverse of how I just did it. So I'll walk through that a little slower. So what I'm going to do to, to tighten this, I need to tension that spring without winding up more rope on the pulley. So what I'm going to do, I'll pull it out maybe a foot here just to expose some rope slip this rope out from behind the pulley and some of some engines have a little notch in the side of the pulley it's like a just just a little u-shaped notch the honda engines don't bother putting that in there but actually in some older hondas you can still find that but a lot of the briggs motor and kohler motors most engines have some kind of a little notch on the front of the recoil pulley and that's handy because when you pull the rope out like this to tension the spring you just fit it up into that notch since this doesn't have a notch, I just have to sort of hold that spring or the rope with my thumb against the pulley, and I use the, the rope to actually tension the spring. That is, I'm winding this thing up, and I can feel that I'm, I'm, I'm tightening the spring. So I'm tightening the spring. I just did one round without wrapping the rope on anymore because the rope was disengaged out of the pulley slot. So that was one. Now, I know that this feels a little weak. It's not great. I had taken two loops off this earlier. You saw me do it, so I'm going to put two loops back on it. I could have done two at once, but I just tested it there. So now it snaps back nice. Now, you can over tension these things, of course. If it's over tensioned, then it would be a case where when you pulled it out to the maximum uh, point, 
if it stops, if the pulley stops before this is lined up, you know it's actually bottoming out on the spring. And that's over tension. You're going to break the spring if you keep running it that way. So you have to back it off one loop uh, so that you know, at the end of the rope, what's stopping you is actually the rope and not the spring compressing. That's it. A uh, little lubricant around the moving parts usually helps. Uh, if you've got the kind of rewind starter with these kind of little jaws that jump out of it here, it's not a good idea. Those are the jaws that engage with the flywheel of the engine to start the motor. Um, you don't want to get a lot of lubricant right on those jaws because they usually rely on some kind of friction system to, to kick them out. So if I was going to spray any lubricant on this starter, which it doesn't need because it's brand new, uh, I would probably try to get it in behind here to lubricate the spring in the back of the starter, not necessarily get it on, the, on where the jaws jump out of there. So I would spray it in here and then kind of hold the rewind up on its side and work it in and out like this to work that lubricant down into the spring. So that's it. Rewind Starter 101. Thanks for watching.